Did you know that you can use Smart Race to do lap counting and lap timing for your analog slot car track as well? Yeah, that's right, and it's very easy. It works for Carrera Evolution, Carrera Go, Skelectric, Polycar, whatever you have, and even if it's the cheapest of all slot car tracks from the supermarket, it will work. And here's how. For the analog mode to work, you will need two things. The first thing is a device which is running Smart Race. Smart Race was originally only meant for Carrera Digital, but has the analog mode built in. The second thing that you need is another device which is running Smart Race Connect. This doesn't have to be a smartphone, it could also be a tablet, and it doesn't have to be the same operating system as the other device. So, for example, this is an Android phone, and what I showed you before is an iOS device, an iOS tablet, actually an iPad. So it could be vice versa, it doesn't matter, it could also be the same operating system, but it doesn't have to be. The most important thing that you need is a camera. So the device that you're using with Smartless Connect does need a camera. The third thing that you need to keep in mind is that both of these devices need to be on the same Wi-Fi network. So this is important because otherwise they won't be able to connect to each other and won't be able to communicate. Uh, so this is my iPad. This is running Smart Race, the latest version. And here I've prepared a smartphone, uh, which will be used for Smart Race Connect. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to start the Smart Race Connect server on my iPad, which is in the main menu. So I uh, start the server by tapping the menu item, then start server. Then it will generate this QR code here. And the next thing that I need to do is I need to uh, open this up and I need to start Smart Race Connect on my smartphone here. This is uh, a Samsung Galaxy S8, so it's not a very recent smartphone. Older versions, uh, older, older smartphones will also work, newer, of course, as well. And now I'm going ahead and scan the QR code. Um, this will open up the camera view. And now it has already been scanned. And now you have several things here you can pick from. You can ignore pretty much everything on top of the screen and you only need the analog sensor mode for your analog time tracking. So I'm going to open this up. And now that I did that, um, you didn't see that here, but Smart Race now detected that it's supposed to run in analog mode. So as you can see here, there's no longer the, the blue connection message on top of the screen and the event has automatically been stopped. So the red lights are on. And now I have my camera view here on my smartphone. I put my smartphone a bit on top of the track with a nice clean view on the, on the track. Uh, it would be even better if it would be a bit more away from the track, but okay, for demonstration purposes, it's all right. I got a simple stand here uh, where the smartphone is sitting on. On the bottom right of the screen, there's this little settings icon. Tapping on that will uh, come up with a menu here, and there you can add new hotspots. I will show you what a hotspot is. I tap on the green icon, and as soon as I did that, this green box here appears. And now I can use, uh, I can pick that with my finger and just drag it around until it sits pretty nicely right on the, on the lane, right? So I've got a two lane track here. This is uh, the first lane, this is the second lane. And this little box here, this green box tells Smart Race this will report as controller or lane one. And you can add as many hotspots as you wish. I think it's limited to eight hotspots at the moment. So I will just go ahead and add another one. Um, tap that again, drag it here. So I'm not dragging it exactly on the lane because you need to keep in mind that whenever a car passes by, uh, it should sit cleanly on the car uh, without these are 124 cars. These are a bit too big actually for this video, uh, but the hotspot should only detect this lane and not the other lane, right? So I'm going to drag that a bit more to the top. So I'm just trying to make sure that this uh, hotspot is only detecting the car on lane one, and this one is only detecting the car on lane two. Uh, you need to probably play around with that a bit, okay? And now what we have to do is we have to start the event here in Smart Race. This could either be a race or qualifying, whatever. Now it's a free practice. I'm going to start that. And as soon as all the lights have run down, I can actually drive. And so whenever I go through one of the hotspots, which I now did, 
a lap is automatically detected. I will do that again, just that you see it. So I go through the hotspot and a, a lap has been detected. Well, actually not a lap in this case, because it's the first time that the car crosses the line. But now we have our time tracking. And now if I go around with the car, hopefully in a clean and perfect lap, not too fast, obviously. We have the same thing again, right? And now we have our first lap time, which is not very fast, but still. And now this is pretty much it. Another thing that you can fiddle around with is uh, the sensitivity of the hotspots. For my case, uh, the camera of this smartphone is like mediocre, I would say. It's not pretty good from today's standards, but still good enough. So I set it to a low sensitivity because otherwise, uh, since this is uh, based on changes in the camera image, it will also detect other things which go through, right? So if I move my hand through, it will detect the lab. And uh, so if you just move it a bit, now it will detect nothing, although the image changes a bit. This is because of the sensitivity. So if I just go here into the menu and then hit settings, I can choose from several settings that I can um, use to adjust this to my needs. So first of all, I can set a detection cooldown, which means that uh, and now it's four seconds, which means that when a car went through the hotspot, uh, the hotspot will not be triggered for another four seconds at least. For the sensor tolerance or sensitivity, I set this to 100, which means it's not very sensitive, but you can just go uh, go ahead and uh, move the slider just a bit. I'm setting this to, to 10%, for example. I save it. And now if I move this around, you can see that a lab has been triggered. And even if I produce a little shadow here, and this is because the sensitivity is now too high and every little change in the image will be counted as a lab. So you probably want to play around with that a bit, set it to uh, the best um, value for your specific camera device. Another thing that you can do in the analog mode is pit stops. So for this, this works the same way. We have our hotspots here and what we do now is we uh, fix these hotspots, we, we save them. So we again open the menu save hotspot still image this is the menu uh, thing that we need now the still images have been saved and now it will not only detect when a car goes through but it will detect if a car stands still within the hotspot so i'm just uh, moving the car here for demonstration purposes now as you can see it detects it for both hotspots i need to uh, make sure that i pull them around just a bit more but you can see on the bottom here that it's detecting a pit stop for this car and this is what I can see in Smart Race here as well. Now the little P in free practice says I'm in the pits. And you can use this, for example, for the lap time best fuel simulation in Smart Race to have simple pit stops in um, the analog mode of Smart Race, which is pretty nice. All right, that's it for the analog mode. Hope you guys liked it. As I said, uh, I post the links into the description for the manual for every other thing that you need to know. And if you run into any issues or have any more questions about it, just feel free to post a comment to this video and I will answer it as soon as I can. Bye bye.